Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Keat today painted a vision of how he and the 4G leaders intend to lead Singapore. Mr Heng spoke on his team's unwavering commitment to build a future where all Singaporeans have the opportunities to succeed, where no one will be left behind if they give their best and where everyone will pull together as one. In his keynote speech at the Institute of Policy Studies annual Singapore Perspectives Conference, Mr Heng said, My 4G colleagues and I are committed to go beyond just working for you, to working with you, to build our future Singapore. Mr Heng added that just like how our founding fathers built up nationhood with policies such as home ownership, the Singapore Together movement launched last year will be the 4G leader's way of nation building. Now we have Assistant Political Editor Lim Yan Liang in the studio to tell us more. Welcome Yan Liang. Hi Arantou. Now Yan Liang, first of all, you know, if you could tell us what stood out the most for you in uh, DPM's speech, the main takeaway of his speech. My main takeaway today was that Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Keat uh, in essence gave what looked to me like the mm. broad strokes of the PAP's uh, general election manifesto right. for the coming general election. La. Yeah, by framing the long-term issues facing Singapore, as well as the 4G leadership's proposal to tackle them. Right. So DPM Heng said uh, we're living in an era of rising inequality and the government will ensure no Singaporean is shut out of opportunities mm. because of their family background by doing more to help disadvantaged children, for instance. Mm. He also said that at a time of technological disruption, uh, the government will do more to help workers upskill and in particular he highlighted workers in their 40s and 50s Right. And Mr. Heng also pledged to keep public housing affordable in a time of uh, widening generational divides. Mm. Mm. Right now, Yan Liang, it seems that the running theme as well in uh, Mr. Heng's speech is about uh, rallying Singaporeans to work together, right, with the leaders to build the future of Singapore. And he cited the Singapore Together movement as well. And he gave examples of it. Could you share more on that? Yes, so the Singapore Together movement is the latest citizen and state engagement effort mm. launched by the government last June. So what I found notable was that Mr. Hing compared the Singapore Together, which is in the same vein as our Singapore conversation, yeah. with the home ownership policy of the founding generation of PAP leaders. So by calling the citizen engagement movement a cornerstone of nation building, he has, uh, he, he says that this will strengthen Singaporeans stake in the country and uh, shared ownership of Singapore's future right. uh, which is uh, quite notable because of course the housing policy mm. is considered one of the uh, bedrocks of Singapore's stability. Yeah. Mr. Heng also went as far as to call Singapore together the way forward for uh, the country, mm. uh, akin to a pathfinder yeah. or you know, a true north for the country, and that government agencies will craft policies in a more collaborative uh, manner, mm. and with government working more closely with the average citizen in more aspects of policy making. Right, right. Some of the areas uh, Singaporeans can look forward to playing a bigger role in include uh, environmental sustainability, mm. as well as the look of uh, Singapore's landscape and built environment, right. uh, including the upcoming Somerset Belt and the Geelang Sarai Cultural Precinct. Right. Now, that aside, of course, uh, you know, rallying Singaporeans together, part of his speech is where he gave a glimpse of what the next month's Singapore budget is going to look like. What did he say and why say it today, you know? Yeah, as we all know, and as was uh, mentioned a few times uh, at today's uh, dialogue, uh, today's conference, yeah. uh, the general election is looming. And uh, it's uh, like it or not, it's an election budget. So, uh, some of the things he hinted at was what he uh, had identified when he mentioned the problems facing Singapore. For instance, he said the government will make a further push to help workers pick up new skills, and he said that the government is developing the next stage of skills future. Right. He also said the government is studying ways to better help lower and lower middle class Singaporeans, mm. including helping current and future seniors to meet their retirement needs. So I take this as a strong hint of uh, possible transfer payments or some other form of subsidies to help Singaporeans cushion the rising cost of living, especially in their silver years. Mm. Now, of course, uh, it remains to be seen exactly what the details are. He did mention that uh, the full details he's going to be sharing more when uh, budget comes next month, right? Yeah, uh, February 18. February 18. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Yan Liam, for you know, coming to the show to tell us more. Now, to read more on this, you can check it out on our website, straightstimes.com.